Good morning, everyone. Look at this. Look at this beautiful, fresh young man alongside me here. <laughs> It is indeed, it is indeed. So last night I was just watching the game and all that and this guy wanted to chat about football Manchester City because Pep, Pep wow were the words that came out of your mouth. Uh, Of course, this guy needs no introduction but I'll do it anyway. Maka Richards, Manchester City legend, current superstar pundit, absolutely everywhere in the world of football right now and a big blue representing us over on Sky and BT and everywhere else, um, across in the States as well with Jamie. Um, Micah, thank you so much for coming on the channel, mate. How are you doing? No, thank you for having me. Um, I think it's long overdue, hasn't it? I mean, we've been talking, you've been tweeting me for years and years and years. <laughs> and I'm, all, I'm always, no, I'm always sort of sceptical about coming on, say, streaming podcasts yeah. with someone just affiliated with one club because I don't want to be seen as a biased pundit, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I get that. Um, and that's the only reason why I don't really do them that often. But like in terms of support that you know all the the locals give me and all that, I think it's it's only right that I try and give a little bit back where where I can because you know he, you know what it's like over the years. A lot of city fans have thought it's been slightly biased towards uh, the, the bigger teams. And when I came into punditry, yeah. I didn't want to be associated with being biased. I wanted to just be honest and sort of infectious and truthful to what was going on. That that was what I set out to do while trying to help City on the way. Yeah. Um, but just showing it from a city five uh, um from a city side rather than just being biased and that's what I tried to do. No, it works, man. It works. And I'm not just trying to say it's to kiss your ass because you're on my channel right now. But you can tell. You can tell that that's what you've, you've set out to do because it comes across. I mean, you're liked by fans other than City, so I think it worked, you know. Even though you clearly are still got that City love. It's obvious, mm-hmm. but it doesn't mm-hmm. come across at any point as like... Um, it's you know clouding your judgment or anything like that, and you're like, I, yeah. I, do you know how you know it works? Because I've seen the odd city fan go, "What's Michael on about every now and then?" <laughs> and I like, know. <laughs> yeah, they're like, I'm like, I've got to call it how I see it. You know what I mean? That's the way. But I like, I like that though. I like the fact that people challenge me. We had a really good conversation last night on Sky about certain bits and pieces, especially like, yeah, like you said, the, the the Pep interview, which was for me, it was wow. I've never seen him like that before uh and there's so many different takes but not everyone would agree with what i said but that's the whole the whole thing about like punditry and opinions and all that sort of stuff like if we agree on everything then it's boring isn't it <laughs> yeah and football's for every everyone so that's what makes it so great i, I get it as well I and mean, my channel's literally got man city fan channel written in the fucking title and i still get gold what you want about as if i'm anti man city <laughs> i could <laughs> i don't even know my whole existence is supporting the club but you know but it's we get it everywhere but but either way it, like it does come across um and it is nice as a city fan as you we were saying just before we started recording you got yourself you got jolian got you know nadim and obviously people like zabba pop up all here and Vinny yeah, does the other Finals, yeah. It's 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 happening, isn't it? You know, we're uh, we're not we're, we're here, we're about the city, city lots, and people like yourself, of course, you know, and you, well, you started it, so well done, man, well done, you know. Well, like, <laughs> no, you... Can I can I ask you a question? I know you're you're the interviewer here, but oh, go on then, you're um, sitting around, you've been doing your own podcast scene before, you know it. You no, know, I just I, <laughs> I just like the fact because you're closer to you're the you're the voice for the for the man Man City fans. Um, and you have been for a while, and I know there's other people yeah. who who are doing it, um, and their their opinions are totally valid. But I think when people are coming for a Man City opinion or inside, they're, they're coming to you. And when I seen the fans boo at half time yesterday, I don't know if you you streaming or if you was at the game. Or I was actually what, it wasn't at the game yesterday. I was it was at the game. Um, where do you think that has come from? Because any City fan knows, like, just to be where we are is, oh, I should say, where they are. I shouldn't, shouldn't say we, but where they are, it's just incredible. And I know frustration is high, and I know the, the, the bar has been set so high in terms of performances, but where did that come from? Um, well, firstly, I could go back to that. I don't really consider myself like the voice of all city fans, obviously, because there's so there's such a variety and like and like this city fans, there's, there's so many great content creators have been doing it a lot longer than I've done as well. So I know I'm lucky to have a platform and all that. Um, and I, I wouldn't ever really try and speak for all of them because it's just not mm-hmm. my place to do it. And you know what it is. You guys, we can't speak for everyone always. Mm-hmm. I would guess, to be honest, I think it was just a bit, a little bit of bad timing. Like I'm not a 
booer personally. Um, but I do think last night it was a combination of tickets being really expensive, which they were, and then it was just two yeah. goals back to back dead quickly. I think it was more like a fuck off. You know what I mean? I think yeah. it was more just to like, I think if it had happened early on in the first half and it wasn't back to back quickly and City had started to play the way back into it a little bit, I think they would have been less just visceral. But I think they were just frustrated in that moment. And I think it was, just, I think it was a lot of it was down to time. And then, to be honest, Pep talked about he wanted a bit of passion and what a bit of reaction. And it wasn't maybe what he wanted, but maybe, you know, maybe sometimes things need to be heard. And I don't think it was like meant to be disrespectful, more just come on, you know, come, come on, on, yeah, like come on, like. And it, well, we can say what we want, but eventually it kind of worked, you know, you know, and the reaction was happened. And like, I think, I do think City fans do respect these players. I think they do because what they've given us, you know, over the years, like it's been, mm-hmm. it's been a pleasure. It's been an absolute pleasure. So, so for Man City, and I always say on my channel as well, like I say to the younger fans in particular. You know, because we're roughly of a certain similar age, Mike, and like we 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 know about City's history, and it hasn't always been this lucky. You know, like I like right now, like um, you know, I always say like this is the best time to support Man City in the club's history. Just enjoy it because it won't always yeah. be perfect. And I do mm-hmm. think um, I do think most of the match going fans, I think they do know that it's obviously a lot more local based the match going fans, and I think they they appreciate it. But I think last night was just frustration. I think it was cold as well. <laughs> I think it was cold, yeah, yeah. tired, it's cold, frustrating. It was freezing. It, really Spurs was. again. Spurs. Fucking always Spurs, isn't it? So I reckon it was a combination of a few factors. And I guess you, do you, I guess you felt like it was probably a bit undeserved then, yeah? Yeah, because I, I, again, when, when you are doing something for a broadcaster as big as Sky, you've got to be careful that you don't mix your words a little bit. I said it was unacceptable, do you know what I mean? Just because of the fact that um yeah, City are gonna go down in games and they're gonna they're gonna concede. You need the fans to go the other way and and, and, and jeer them up. Like you said, it probably worked because they got a reaction in the in the second in the second half. But I was just more surprised than, than, than anything. Like I heard it and I was like, okay, is it the referee getting booed for I was like the referee's been quite quite good today. It couldn't have been the referee. And then it, it continued for a while, and I was thinking, "Wow." I mean, it did surprise me. It did surprise me. I must admit, but um, it, it I, I do think it was a, a combination, you know, of just their uh, timing and all that kind of stuff. And it, I guess, mm-hmm. what does, what's it like? Have you have you been on the pitch before when like you get a booing? Is it is it does it, oh, is it visceral? I've, I've been booed, not by City fans, to be fair, and that's that's the sort of love, <laughs> and that's why I always protect City fans as much as I possibly can because, like, I my career was like oh. And then shot it right down. I couldn't get you know, couldn't get my form going. I got injured and yeah. all that sort of stuff. And they always stuck with me. And you always get the people saying, "Oh, another one who you know who's supposed to do so much and he's he's not done what he's supposed to do." You always get that, of, of course. Yeah, yeah. But in in the in the grand scheme of things, I, I think they always stuck with me. So I always, I would never go against the fans unless it was totally justified. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'll even like the way I said it yesterday on Sky, it was more like, um, okay, it's disappointing. Do you know what I mean? Rather yeah. than the fans are a disgrace. Cause I, w- I, w- I would never do that. But what is, what is different now is from when I was at main road, I used to go there as Academy and win, lose or draw. It was absolutely rocking. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But this new, this new fan now, if they're not scoring, two or three in the first half, they're sort of just like in disbelief. And that and that is the, the strange thing for a team that's performed so well. And I know the old school City fans w- would never be doing that, but it's not the, the new ones it, who have been used to something that's yeah. been so great. When they don't get that, that's now their reaction. Maybe it's maybe it, maybe it needs to happen to some fans. You know, <laughs> everything isn't mm. perfect all the time, and you know how quickly things can change in football. It's difficult. So I like I think it is what it is, and I think maybe 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 Pep, there's an element of truth in what Pep was saying. Maybe a bit of complacency complacency has kicked yeah. in, not just with everyone all around. I must have even I've been saying I consider myself a pretty rational fan. Going, oh, we'll sort it out. You know, we will sort it out. You know, like yeah. you, you just because yeah. defend that's Pep's fault as well. <laughs> like he's so fucking good. Like, <laughs> yeah. like he's made us feel that way, but maybe he just needs. I think he's just trying to get a reaction as well with comments, by the way. Even with the fans, I think he's trying to get everyone going. Because Pep's happy when he's like, no, you're tired, fuck you. You know, he's happy when he's doing that. <laughs> like, that's what he's like, Pep, isn't he? Like, and he likes that. He likes that banging heads together, you know, and he likes it. Um, what did you make of his comments, by the way, on like, about the players? You know, Because he even said, like, lacking hunger and all this kind of stuff. And, like, he's normally been so defensive of his players in the press. But I, I, you've seen the interview, I guess, but he was, he was visceral last night. He came out and said the organisation, the fans, the players, lack of hunger. Passion. 
Passion, yeah. I mean that this I is a multiple league winners and he's calling the passion. I couldn't I couldn't believe that's the first the, the interview was so intriguing mm. because me and Carragher was going a bit back and forward and we had sort of a difference of, on opinion. Uh we, we was we got to the same conclusion, but I was saying I, I've never seen him like this before in terms of people not saying, Oh, was it a bad interview? It was a great interview oh, it was amazing. because you got so much out of it. But my point I was trying to make was I've not seen him like this. Normally you get sarcasm, you know, or sarcastic <laughs> pep. You know what I mean? I love passive aggressive pep, by the way. When he's like, you, mm, you know what he's me. thinking, yeah. but he's not saying it. You, you know for well what he's really thinking, but he's protecting his player, he's protecting the club, and he does it brilliantly. You know, you know, he plays the game better than everyone else. But yesterday, it was like, it was true emotion of what normally what he's thinking came out on, on air which was a, a great interview. And I just think when you start questioning the, your, your players, um, he was sending a massive message, wasn't he? Basically yeah. to say, look, you can't boo us. The players are not being good enough. I've won what I've won. Do you know what I mean? Being brilliant. I need, I need everyone to go back to, you know, their best, basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was it was just an in, in, intriguing interview, and it was refreshing because he was honest. Uh, and you know when we got managers do pressers, and he yeah. like really wants to say something, but he says something else. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to see that Pep a little bit more because it, it's passionate, and I think that's what eventually could take us to the next step. We talk about the. You know, the league has been perfect, but, you know, the Champions League, yeah. you know, when the games, I always go back to the Real Madrid game. You know, when we I'm didn't... I'm still hurting, mate. I'm still hurting. Yeah, and, I mean... and it's still hurting. It's still, and it's just like, you need that little bit of an edge. You need that little bit of a passion, that desire, just to take you over the line. Yeah. And I think it's perfect. I think it's exactly what the, what the players needed um, because there's only so much or so many, how many times you can protect the players. Mm -hmm. And I think the interview was great. I think everything he said was fair, you know, like he didn't he didn't ever question their, their individual character or anything like that. He said maybe they've lost some hunger, you know, and it's probably mm -hmm. true. And I was saying last night in my video, I thought about it. Do you know what? You can make an argument that every player on the pitch last night is probably the most hungriest. Not the most informed, yeah. but the most hungriest. And Because you go yeah. through it, like, you, obviously the keeper's the keeper. But then Ake is like, you would argue that people like Ake and Grealish have probably got something to prove still to themselves, you know, because of course, of course, of course. Ake and Grealish broken team. Then you've got Akanji's a new signing. You know, Alvarez, Haaland, new signings are always a hungry to prove. Young 18-year-old City fan at right back, he's going to be hungrier than anyone. You know, and you've got people like, of course... Um, uh, you know, then you've got the reliable ones like Stones and Rodri and so on. These ones, I would say, put that if I was to list hungry players, it probably would be them. But you know, and they're the ones starting. And I think Pep's really making it obvious right now that the only thing that matters to him are the players that want it. You know, the ones who have that smell, as you would say. You know, the ones who really want to be out there on the pitch. And um, I guess no one epitomised that more than a man, Micah, who burst onto the scene. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rico Lewis, mate, I had to go there. Like, we're, we're leaving that in 2002, but you need to make a new a slogan for me. You know what I mean? Um, I couldn't, I couldn't ignore that. But you, no, he really has, any man. Like, bloody hell! Like, by the way, I remember watching your interview post Villa game. I was, um, I was in a, I was my friend's band was playing in Liverpool, and I was watching like the Villa game in a pub with them. And I remember the whole pub bursting out laughing after you know you went, oh fucking great or whatever. The Villa goal. <laughs> Even Liverpool fans are laughing, man, because it was on in the pub. It was amazing. I loved it. Um, it's just like, uh, I was like, oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> because you think about it, though, because let me talk about it for just 30 seconds of your time. You Imagine being that young. Oh, that's amazing. You've been, you've been thrusted into the FA Cup. This is brilliant. <laughs> like, you've had a couple opportunities in the game before. Just wide. Just wide. And in the last minute, Crofty goes down, down the wing, gets a corner. Joey Barton, like, I've always told him, <laughs> don't, don't, stop this curling malarkey, fizz it because I can jump higher than anyone else. And when he put the curl in, and anyone can get there if he's that. If, if he goes, I don't know, a foot or two higher than anyone else, I back myself yeah. at that time against anyone that I'll out jump them. So I was just, it's like, just, I was, you could see me before, like in the corner, <laughs> going like, just, just do that. And then it come and I was like, it's time. You know the timing of everything. Yeah, you know what's yeah. happening. It's coming. The time slowed down everything for you. Yeah, yeah and I'm you're like, 
Matrix style. David James, big stupid David James. <laughs> big stupid like, get David the, James. Get, get, get out of the way. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I was like, boom. But it's not about me. Re- Rico. No, mate, really, honestly, that goal, by the way. Was oh, that one of the best moments of your career? That had to be, right? Uh, it, it, yeah, because that's what put me on the map, didn't it? You always get them sort of moments that put you on the map. Um, and oh. I loved it. That, that, that oh. moment, how it felt. I, you know, winning the FA Cup was brilliant. Winning the, the league was sensational. But scoring that moment yeah. and then running into the fans and then just like, but then in the end, the fans were let go. <laughs> it's sort of like, I can't breathe here. Like, <laughs> well, that's, that's how you go out there. You're just like, you smothered. You know, that's it. What, what, <laughs> what, first goal, last goal, incredible. Uh, mate, it was amazing. And that's the kind of thing in football that you live for. And it, it ties in with Rico as well because he's goal against Sevilla, man. Like, the celebration oh. and the passion. Like, he was, I swear he was welling up when he was walking around the pitch as a substitute when everyone was going, Rico, Rico. And he was like, you could see the emotion in his face. It's everything, isn't it? He is, and I said it on Sky the other week, but you know what? I'm always cautious about giving people a lot of credit. Just because of my experience, people yeah. built me up too much. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then when you don't deliver, it's almost hard to, to replicate that at times. But this player is a special, special player. Forget the, the old school fullback, we up and down, you get crosses in it. He's dictating the play from midfield. For Pep. I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm watching him and I'm thinking, okay, he's got the ball at right back here. Okay, he's going to play the ball. It goes right inside. Stones comes out, makes a free at the back with a, a kanji. Aki comes really narrow to help have the, 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 the numbers in the centre of the pitch. But when he's receiving the ball, look, when you're talking about a defender, we have everything in front of us. Like, right back, on the ball, normally, when they're, you're playing against opposition, their winger drops off. Yeah. So, right back, normally, you get the most time. Centre back or right back, depending on how they press against you. When you go into midfield and you have to be on the half term, it's an incredibly hard yeah. skill to do that. So I'm looking at him thinking he's playing right back. He's playing midfield. Second half, he's bursting forward in like getting in number 10 positions. I'm like, what is this? What, what, what is <laughs> who is I'm, he? I'm, I'm, I'm see, yeah, who, who is this? And we talk about people playing. So it's, these are some of the best. And I forget the sort of goals. And I say, forget that. And I like the, the sort of last ditch tackles. I'm talking about technically and, and tactically for his brain to be able to do that at that age is just staggering to it, it's 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 mind-blowing to see and people will look at it and be like oh rico did all right so it, it, it was unbelievable, unbelievable. Ten out of ten, it? to do you know what i mean no, I absolutely agree. And I, I said the same on Twitter last night. I was like, people, people aren't really appreciating just how good it is what he's doing. Like, it's it's insane. It's not a fucking against Scunthorpe in the third round of the FA Cup. I'm not, with all due respect to Scunthorpe, it isn't. Yeah. It's, it's Chelsea, Liverpool, Leeds, Spurs. These are some of the toughest games you'll have in a season. And Rico's just there in a Manchester City side for Pep Guardiola playing one of the most complicated convoluted positions in world football right now you know this weird inverted thing and even in the second half Pep said go out wide a little bit and actually play more as a fullback and he fucking did it as well he did it perfectly and like it's I think it is astonishing like I think this is genuinely astonishing and like I know the temptation you're right not to build up too much but Pep's doing it Pep's like this guy is making my team play you know like and Pep Guardiola is saying one of the greatest coaches of all time saying that this young lad is making my team better like Oh, it's. I think it's remarkable, isn't it? And he's a City fan as well, man. And that matters, doesn't That's it? That's what makes it even better. It matters. You talk about that passion. He's got all the technical side with with, with the passion to to add to that. It, it reminds me of, uh, and I don't look. I, I hate throwing out names, but in terms of players who can play that position and do it well, like remember Philip Lam yeah. at Bayern Munich, well, the way he as well. So to, it's fair. Yeah, put in that in that in that position then. Like a Kimmich who could play fullback yeah. and could play was comfortable on the ball in in that centre mid. My only, it's not even a concern. It's not a worry. But it's just the the next phase. So eventually, at some stage, Pep is gonna gonna leave Man- Manchester City. You know, hopefully, does hopefully stays for lifetime. <laughs> I don't want to think about down, that man. thought because of being incredible. But the way Pep plays and the way he's learned to play the game, Rico Lewis, 
suits Pep's yes. style, if you know what I mean. So I always make this comparison, and the same with like with England. So when Foden's playing for England, you're not getting sometimes the same Foden because the way that they play. We don't want Foden out on the left wing, yeah, yeah. where he's isolated. You want him involved with the game. The reason why he works on the left wing at Man City is because people's positions are always interchanging, rotations there. He can be fluid. You know what I mean? And it's that's my only worry for Rico Lewis going forward. Like, is he missing out on other styles of play because of the way Man City and Pep play now? Is he going to be equally as effective yeah. if he uh, another manager wants his fullback to say really high and wide and go up and down? Which in the in the Champions League game we've seen that he can do. Yeah. But is he going to be missing out because he's basically playing as a midfielder right now, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. Like I think. If you look at players now, Trent Alexander-Arnold would love to play in the system that Man City play because he loves to get the ball in mid in midfield. Yeah. Starts at right back, coming midfield. Um, but it's just a credit to, to to a player so young to be able to adapt to these positions and do it so well. Do you feel your age when you're like that? Because obviously, like, do you, I mean, what I mean by that is like. Are you aware how young you are when you? Because obviously you, you, you know, well, I won't say the catchphrase again, don't worry. But you obviously you, you broke through. <laughs> the yeah, <laughs> you broke through at that age, and like um, very similar in terms of a sudden, you know, meteoric rise and all this kind of stuff. And what's it like, man? Because obviously everyone's just lauding you, and everyone's telling you how great you are and all this kind of stuff. Like it must be quite a lot, you know. It must be like it must weigh down yeah. in you. It, it get it gets a lot because. You know, I've got to give context to, to you know the, the new the new city fans. Um, when I was coming through, like City were a good Premier League yeah. side. We had some very good players, good Premier League players. Richard Dunn, I always mention him because he's my favourite. He coached Dunny. me through the game, and I I was like centre half, right back. Do you know what I mean? So I was more a defender first, who loved to to burst forward, but I kept getting accolades for my marauding runs down the right. So I was like, I need to <laughs> continue doing this. And then played for England at 18. And all my development, because just in two years ago in the in the youth team, I was playing centre midfield. I, I wanted to be the new Mark Vivian Foley. You know, yeah, God yeah. bless him. So yeah, that, that was what I thought I was going to be. All through the youth, that's, that's what I was going to be. And then I got moved into centre back in a youth in a youth cup game, got man in a match, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is this is easy. You get so much time." <laughs> and then when I moved to the first team, it was uh, Richard Dunn and Distan. He wasn't moving them. You had Nader Manua as well, who was playing right back, centre half, yeah, who yeah. Was, was so consistent. Danny Mills, who got injured, so I was not going to move the people at centre half. So they put me to right back, and I just had the the freedom to go. But what I missed out on is a lot of coaching. So I got labelled early doors as Mike is always out of position. I was always out of position because I've never played the position before. <laughs> I've never played the position. I was like, oh, what, what, what am I doing here? I never played right back in, in the youth team ever. It was it was never it was never a thing. So when I went into the into the first team, I was playing right back. I was out of position, but what I had is the uh, athleticism to get up and back. So I was seen as dynamic. So I was sort of learning sort of on the job between yeah centre mid, uh, you know, centre back, right but then I we didn't have a we had a coach who I love, Stuart Pierce, but he's not got the same tactical now as what Pepper's got. So I was just <laughs> learning through games and then I got catapulted into some sort of stardom. Um and and, and really I was just I was just winging it. And I had all these sort of plaudits and this, that and the other, I'm gonna be better than Gary Neville and all this sort of stuff. I mean, it, it is tough <laughs> to deal with it. what it was. At the time, you're just going through it. When you're playing, you're like, you start getting a little bit arrogant. I know he's not going to beat me. And my form was incredible. But I missed out on a lot of yeah. vital coaching. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But this is the difference between me and Rico. He's way more talented. I was probably stronger, faster, more dynamic than Wiz, but... He's way better. He's way more intelligent. He's way better tactically, and he and he's got a manager who can develop him yeah. and take him to the next level. Where I, you know, 
Pierce was there, then Sven came in, then Hughes came in. Constant change of managers. He's been able to just flourish, mm -hmm. learn the system, and he is he is he's, he's gonna be a superstar. He, he really is. And he seems to have his head switched on as well, doesn't he? You know, like you watch yeah. the interviews with him, he seems like a lovely lad as well. And like he's obviously oh, got top. Yeah, he seems class and like he's got that um his background's think he's like a Thai kickboxer or something like that, you know what I mean? So he's like he's obviously you've got a tough background, you know, Radcliffe lad as well, and they raise him tough around in Barrow, you know, they definitely do and like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they're, 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 he's a he's a little street lad in a good way, you know, like and I think that's um it's gonna do him in good stead that I reckon. And you're right, you know, like he's been so lucky, like not only is he he got the right attitude but he's got pep you know and he's got he's, he's learning mean. from fucking Kyle Walker and Joao Cancelo and like like that education you'd pay a lot for that wouldn't you yourself if you could I would put on his, if I could start my career again just to learn and, and, and I got Mancini at the, 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 the back end of my career and he was sensational I would have loved to mix a little bit of Mancini with a little bit of pep. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I could have been a new Macon. Imagine mixing that together. Uh, do you ever think that? Like, do you reckon? Like, I mean, I've always had a theory that in general, like players, they can be amazing. Like, some players are just superstars. You know, Aguero, a superstar. You know, whatever. Like, they're they've been great in any team. But a lot of players, like. Their, their careers definitely does like hinge on a coach sometimes, doesn't it? You know, like if you get the right coach, you can rock it, can't you, like that? And if you get the one who doesn't rate you all of a sudden, you can probably stagnate a little bit and lose two or three seasons. And do you always think sometimes, like, oh, imagine if I had Pep when I was younger? Do you feel it that way? Like, I always feel like that. And, yeah. and a good example is that is like someone like Nadem, who was so consistent. Yeah, he might not have the, the, the technical ability of a, a Rico Lewis um, or, or, or John Stones. But he was just a solid defender. Yeah. And when the game evolved, because he, I'm not saying couldn't, but because that wasn't his game to do them sort of things, because I'm not going to absolutely kill Nader. No, I'll tell him, Nader. don't worry, I'll tell him, man. He's got it. This is a compliment I'm giving him. Like, yeah, no. he, was, he was steady and he was strong and he read the game well and, and everything. But a manager comes in and just doesn't fancy him because of, Mancini, we all man. have. He's told me on my channel, by the way, so it's not like a hidden thing. Like, yeah, but yeah. We, we all have things in our game that we can improve, don't we? And when a manager comes in, they can focus on things that you can't do. Yeah. And he was just in a moment where that, that happened to him, un unfortunately. So when I look back, in answer to your question, if a fully fit me when I was younger with the guidance of a Mancini or Pep from the start, yeah. Without the injuries as well. You know, I was I was, I was too... I don't like the word injury prone, but my knee was gone from a young age. Yeah, so I, yeah. I, was, I did become injury prone. But sprinkle that all together. Of course it would have made me better. I, I, I sometimes think... I like the fact in way I, I came from, like, the academy and we wasn't that great and we won the first Premier League, won the first every <laughs> cup. That's always great to have, you know what I mean? It's like, look what we did. And we didn't have the tools that the players have now. We didn't have all these world class superstars at the time. We took it to to where we needed to go. So that's always you nice. Did, man. Well, you did. You that did. nice one to have. But playing in this side now would just be an absolute dream. And it would have improved me so much. And look, I might have not been a Pep Guardiola the player because the fullbacks don't I wasn't going to say it, man, but you can. <laughs> but no, I think, no, you're probably right. That's the thing is, like, Pep demands, and I don't mean I don't mean this as a criticism at all. Like, they, they can be a fucking great footballer, and you're still not good enough. Nasri wasn't even technical enough for Pep, you know what I mean? Like, that's what I mean. It's crazy, isn't it? Like, the, the level he demands. I mean, technically, if you're not, yeah, and that's why I know we're giving Rico Lewis a lot of praise here, but that's why I, I love Walker as well, because. Yeah. He is being. He learned. He's a good example, by the way. He learned because he wasn't that when he came initially. This is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. He, and that's what we talk about the, the coaching. He learned. He was a marauding fullback, up, down, up, down, up, down. He's changed his game completely. And I think when you give him praise to others, a lot of people think, you know, he's, he's doing down walk. I, I love walk. I think he's yeah, been he's a brilliant servant for the club. The way he's been able to adapt, the way that he's been able to just. Alter his, his, his strength within his game, but still be effective. Like, can fit into that right of a centre half role. Yeah. Can go forward when he needs to. He got his assist against um, in, in, in the cup game, was it? Um, yeah, Chelsea. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, in, yeah, 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 against Chelsea. Um, that was an old school walker as well, overlapping. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. He's, still, he's, still, he's still got that. Uh, and I just think 
for Rico Lewis to be learning off Cancelo and Walker and, and Pep is absolutely perfect. And long may it continue. Absolutely, man. Uh, and before, like, I've got to run off to a sensory class with my baby in a minute. But yeah, before no, I do that, yeah, yeah. Do you know what? Literally, this is how good, good parent wins. Like, Michael said, can you do 10? I was like, and I, my wife was like, oh, you have to do it. It's all right. I was like, no, I'm putting little Ruben first. It's all right. Don't worry. So, <laughs> good dad. Like, I've got a super daddy hook up here. You're putting Ruben lovely. Uh, I've got to do it, man. Like, like, uh, but obviously, you know, I've got to bed early for you, man. I've got to do it, you know. Oh, uh, I, love that. I, love that. <laughs> I didn't sleep anyway, I'll be honest. Fucking knackered. <laughs> uh, but before we jump on, like, uh, jump off this call, man. Um, last night's performance, um, Pep's reaction, City's performances so far this season. Does this set up this game against Wolves? It's big now, isn't it? It feels like it feels like a big game, given not necessarily for the result, but the performance. You know, does that we got to see a reaction surely after that? Yeah, and when we did see a reaction in in, in the second yeah. half, and I think that's the great <coughs> reaction that we needed. Um, I think Spurs was was needed at the time because we needed to play against a team who know that can do damage against us. If you look at the results last season took six points of, of, of Man City. So there was vulnerable. You're thinking, who could do damage against City? It's a team who are going to play the low block and get the counter-attack. Yeah. So to come out of that game in the second half and score four goals, it just took a little bit of pressure on. But now they need to stay with that momentum against Wolves because Wolves have been good against us in, 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 in previous seasons as well. So yeah, yeah. I think they've got that little bit of spark back from from the interview from the players reaction and i think i think they got to show you know again a lot what they did in, in that second half and i think they will I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think they will i think what people need to understand they're not robots everyone's human you're going to go through that time when things are not going to go as well as you. And, and a lot of people just ask me when we wasn't playing as well as a team what's happening i assure you a lot of the players are doing the same things, yeah. but just not getting the same results at some times. Don't forget we've had a World Cup in, in, in the middle of the season. Yeah. A lot of people have come back, not in the same shape, taking a, a while to get going again. Some people have had disappointment. Some people have had, you know, won it like Alvarez is, is, on, is on cloud nine. Yeah. So it's just different reactions to, to different things that are happening in the season. But I do believe they're in the right frame of mind. And just having that Edge thinking, okay, Arsenal. If if they would have been, you know, won that game, gone what eleven points clear. Now, you know, they've got to play again. I think City have got another game before they play yeah, one yeah. of their games. It's <clears throat> just it keeps them within the running, and I think that's exactly what Man City needed. And I think Man City will be back to the best against Wolves. I think you're right, man. <clears throat> I think we have to be, if we're being honest. I think the way it's been set up, uh, and I think Pep's words, like he chooses his words carefully. That guy, he's playing not 4D chess, 5D chess, man. He's like, yes! <laughs> he's so far ahead of all of us. Like, whatever, everything we've just discussed, he's thought about that two weeks ago, and like, he's, he's passed that in his. And that's Pep for you. And like, he's pulled the trigger in that press conference for a reason. Like, he knows what he's doing. Like, and and then, do you know what she said as well? The players aren't, they are human. You know, and, and they are definitely trying. Like, you don't win as much as City do without being, you know, none of them are shirkers because you can't be at this level. You can't yeah. be and you can't get as far as they have. So I do think we'll see a reaction. Mate, thank you so much for coming on the channel. No, Probably. thank you. I need to get on more. You know what we need to do? Like, every time there's a big story or whatnot. I know you're busy. I know you want to I'm do not, I'm not as busy as you. Trust me, don't worry. We'll, we'll just jump on, do you know what I mean? And, and, and discuss it and, and, and see what's what. Get like fans' reaction and all that sort of thing. I love it, man. I'd absolutely love to. And we could do it live as well, so every now and then so people can jump on and have a chat and stuff and we can get some bit of Q&A going and all that kind of stuff. But honestly... Yeah, yeah, why not? You get Ned on as well. It'd be nice. Oh, Ned's... Yeah, Ned, Ned, you'd, love, you'd love it, man. You, you, you can have a right back off, you know, you two. Yeah, I'll get Ned on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, get, I'll get Rico in the summer as well. We'll get all three of us. All four of us. Um, um, yeah, cheers very much, man. It does help, honestly. So thank you for supporting the channel. It's massively appreciated. And of course, as well, you know, you won the league and you're Sky oh, and BT. Yeah. But you know what? This is what you're waiting for, wasn't it, really? Let's be honest. This Natalie. is what I was waiting for, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is what it, that's what you've done it now. You can hang up your um, <clears throat> your mic and your boots and all that you're kind of stuff. You're a big dog now, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? Well, I wasn't going to say it, man. But, you know, Michael Richards in my WhatsApp phone. That, that'll do, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for the link. I was thinking, ooh, what time is he going to send the link? Let's see if he's on time. You said it earlier. Mate, I've been, up, I've been up since seven o'clock. <laughs> I'm knackered. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I blame the baby for that. Um, no, I wasn't going to be late. Uh, thank you very much. Of course, guys, if you enjoyed this, please do hit the like button and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. Thanks for watching this video. Mike is a superstar. Of course, you'll see him everywhere. You like, can't miss that smile. The big beaming smile. And we'll catch you all very, very soon. Let me know, of course, what you made of the game last night. In a bit. And cheers, Micah.